live again Tuesday nights uh, and every Tuesday night from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we have a couple friends of ours on tonight. Uh, we have Kara and George, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name because I'll get it wrong. You go ahead and say it, Carly. <laughs> you don't want to say I'm their good. last name? I'm good. <laughs> uh, show, Chopin? Chopin. I, I'll say that right. Well, they'll say it when they get on anyway. But anyways, they're, they're two good friends of ours. We've been talking to them for quite a while now. Um, uh, we wanted to have them come on the show, especially Carly. and Well, especially me, too. But uh, they're great people in the paranormal. They got a lot going on. They know a lot of stuff. Um, we enjoy uh, just chatting with them at times and stuff, too. So it's all good. Um, and Carly, go ahead. Uh, do you have their bio up? Go ahead and read their bio for me. Yes. Give me two seconds. I can start the bio. George and Kara. Yeah, go ahead. Are awesome. Go ahead and read their bio. George and Kara are super awesome. So, uh, George and Kara have been actively investigating the paranormal for over seven years. They have had a revolving door of paranormal activity in their home for many years and learned how to effectively help the spirits that seek them out. So now they use their abilities to help others. Super commendable, by the way. George yeah. is clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, and claircognizant. He has had these abilities since childhood, but ignored them. As an adult, he's had a near-death experience, and it awoke and enhanced his abilities. Today, he continues to hone his abilities and can obtain amazing results. He also had the opportunity to be on the Ghost Adventures Kennedy Mine episode. That's super cool. Yeah, Karen right. is an intuitive angel card reader, energy healer, light worker, paranormal investigator, and a Reiki master. She has always believed in the paranormal and saw her first full-body apparition when she was 12. One of her close friends is an Eleanor sorry, energy healer, and she helped Kara realize her ability to help spirits cross over and clear negative energy and attachments from people and places. She also creates protective and healing crystal jewelry with love, light, and positive energy. Together, their abilities are growing stronger, and they use them to help the living and the departed be at peace. They empower okay. and teach people to protect themselves and how to coexist with spirits. That's some that's some really great work. And and that was two bios or as long as typically my one when people read mine, I get yeah. embarrassed by that. So I'm sure they get embarrassed by that too. So <laughs> but it's all good. Yeah, and they're they're great people and they're doing a lot here in the paranormal community. Yeah, absolutely. So without further ado, let's bring on our friends, Kara and George. And here they are, everybody. And oh, before we do that, let's real quick. Eric Julian, how you doing tonight? Uh, Bradley Monks is here, Rose is on. Lavinia is on, Lavinia. Barry is on, and we got more yes. coming. Just want to say hi to everybody who just jumped on and said hi to us. But here's our friends, Kara and George, and they'll be on in three, yes. two, one. Are you sure? I don't know you people either, so that's it. You're off the show. Never mind. I'm, I'm oh, those around. are the people we want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, courage is good. I love oh, you. I'm just are, kidding. I love you guys. Those are not the droids you're looking you're for. You're not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> exactly. No, absolutely. It's, it's just like I said. I was going to say this. I'm glad I got to do this with you guys for sure. But I, I have to pay you guys a compliment first before we get started. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You know, you do. there's a lot of shows out there that do what they do on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day. And I have to say about you two, you guys are actually like the SCAR Go of all the shows. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and that's the biggest compliment. I love us. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I love my burgers and fries, but right. you guys are doing it really so well and so perfectly that my comparison to you guys is just escargot. It's perfect. Oh, and, you're good, well, and you guys are doing a great job. George, George oh, don't tell you. any, don't, don't tell anybody, George, it's all ad hoc. We don't oh, plan anything. <laughs> <laughs> It is totally unplanned. We just answer questions here. That's oh, all we do. See, the plan you know. is the people watching. Well, right. I, that's, yes, it is. Actually, the, the plan is the how the show goes. Right. Right. That well, is true. The plan guys, is the people. We watch you guys whenever we can, and when we do. I appreciate that. I really guys, appreciate that. All right, we got to go now. So we'll talk to you guys later. All right. <laughs> See you later. Thanks for a great show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to get a word in. I talk a lot, so I'm going to shut all up. Right. No, nope. no, hey. you're our guest. Hi. You get to talk all you want. That's fine. Exactly. That's why you're guests. You know, it's like you're guests yeah. in our home. So the guests yeah. get to, to say and, and pretty much do what they want here. So we we don't we we have no. Hey, we had Ellen McNeil on. We have no holds barred. 
uh, <laughs> with, with, that, with this. And we also do, I mean, typically we're an hour show. You guys know that. I mean, yeah, and that's the other reason, like, you know, I, I've, I've learned over the years, don't give people too much of you, you know, two hours, a little too much. An hour, you're done with me. Oh, I liked it. Good. Because if two hours was here, you'd be bored of me. I'd be like, yeah. oh, that's not <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's our but, go would be baloney within an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, but my point is, at an hour's time, I usually depart. And uh, But if you guys want to keep going with the show, you can. Carly is more than, than uh, capable of, of running the show and handling it. So, uh, But uh, everybody says, I'll, I'll, I'll give the reason why I usually leave. Uh, uh, it, Everybody says, how come Jack's always has to, oh, he's busy. Is this, I'm actually going to watch Curse of Oak Island is what I'm doing. So He does. He, he totally does. I will be dead honest. I can't, I love, that's my show. That's the only show I really you know, I don't It is so. Though. Hour, I'm gone, man. Now, when the season's over, I'll, I'll, I'll hang out longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been but, sitting, I mean, we, we've all been sitting home. Well, we, we're, we're lucky to be working still. And, and I'm not, you know. Same here. You know, we're lucky. We're both working, and this this hasn't affected us too much. We, we're only home on weekends, so we really don't know the true effect of staying home during this virus. But, you know, at the same time, it, uh, the old guilt kicks in and on, on a very sensitive side. It's, um, we feel bad on a daily basis because we know our friends out there, some are not working. And, right. and it, it is, you know, you start feeling kind of guilt, guilty because we have, for the paranormal, one of the ingredients in paranormal is you know the main ingredient is is having a good heart and and having yeah. a, a being sensitive and and having feelings not for just for ourselves but feelings for other beings uh, right. on this right. side of the veil or on the other side of the veil and the main re, you know the main uh, re, um, ingredient in the rest in, in a recipe is for us is just having love for everybody and right. we get smashed a lot I get smashed a lot I've had people say some stuff but you know it, you move on. You grow yeah. thick skin like it, like a rhinoceros. 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 <laughs> and you just, you just, I like that term. Right? Rhinoceros. Yeah. I like but, that. But you know that's that's who we are. So we have a kind heart. But you yeah, you have to, and, and you have to. You know, I you know being on TV and stuff like that, and and even before that, I used to have people like um, they talk about you right behind your back. They start saying bad things about you. Or, they start saying things. They don't mention you, but you know it's about you and stuff yeah. like you know because there's certain things that it's obvious it's you to everybody. You know, yeah. uh, but when I've met when I've run into people like that, I've actually walked up to them in person and they 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 get a little nervous, right? And I go, "Did I hurt you somehow? Did I did I do something that that I that you know I, I, I hurt you or I did something wrong against you? Because I I know you said this about me." Right. And if I did something wrong, I really want to know because I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if I did. I didn't. And I will totally apologize. They're not expecting that at all. Right. Right. At all. But right. that's how I am. It's like if I did, I really would do want to know because if I hurt you some way or if I said something against you that I didn't really realize I said, I want to know to make it right. And they're like, no, 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 no. And, and two things either happen. I've noticed when you when you take that approach to people who are trying to attack you or or you feel or just you know maybe they don't mis they misunderstand what you're really doing, they'll either turn around really apologize and they become your friend, or they just shut up and walk away and you never hear another word about it from them again. Yeah, um, it's one of two things, and it and it it totally diffuses typically any major confrontation or this whole what you see a lot of times or sometimes I'll say in the paranormal is this whole um, people going after each other in the paranormal and this whole negativity thing. And, and, and you can diffuse that just by taking the higher road and, and maybe you did do or say something that really bothered somebody. You just don't realize it. You know, um, uh, it happens. I mean, it happens. And, yeah. So right. And I, I truly apologize. For it. It's gotten me in trouble a lot. And please just say, George, be quiet. Please. Cause I'm going to talk. No, it's right. George. Well, it, it's, you know, in, we've been doing this for seven years. I joined Facebook three years ago. She talked me into it. I never was into the old social media stuff or anything like that. Yeah. I was afraid of it. And, or afraid. I just didn't want to do it. I wasn't. You're not tech savvy. I'm not. I'm not so. tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're not the tech guy, huh? You're not tech guy. No. Okay, I'm tech she guy. She talked me into it one day, and I did it. And I didn't realize that people find out if you say something about them. 
<laughs> and I did that. I'm guilty. I, 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 I said, yeah, it's right out there, George. I hate to tell you, it's out there for the world to see. For everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I now do. Yeah, if, if you want to just send it to one person, you have to use the private messenger, George. Oh, man. <laughs> so, I, was, I was, you know, at three years ago, I've grown up in the paranormal and Facebook in three right. years. I, I, right. I, I know that I had, I know that I was a talker and I still am, but now That's my talking okay. stays to myself. Uh, I, I'm, you know, it's, it, or he it, says it to me. Yeah. I tell her, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you can still say things, but you've just got to be, I mean, it, sure. there's, there's times when I don't agree with somebody on something. So it's, right. just, it's not, it's not that you disagree with them. It's how you say it. Right. You know, right. you can be respectful about it or you right. can be a total ass about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just try to be respectful. If I see something that I really don't agree with, yeah. I will just say, look, I, I, you know, I, I respect where you're coming from. I can see maybe what you're thinking, but I, did, I just don't agree with it. And I'll give my own perspective on it. Right. And usually this just opens up a conversation. Right. You know, uh, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they get mad and they unfriend you, but well, I tried, uh, you know. <laughs> you to I try to, I, I'll tell you two things to try to avoid. Um, sex and politics. Don't talk about those two things on Facebook. <laughs> Well, you avoid those two things, you're okay for the most part, you know. <laughs> and sometimes too, when you, you ask them if you did something to make them mad, you find out you find out what you did, and it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Like I got someone mad at me and bashing me because I made soap. So, <laughs> well, dare there's you. not much you can do right. about that. That's just <laughs> like all right, all right. That's a yeah. personal thing. You don't like that I make soap. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that. I enjoy making soap. So, you if know, you don't like it, I guess this yeah. don't follow me anymore. I, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. stop making soap because you don't like it. You know, I, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I work for the Department of Defense. That's my full time job. And I'm still working. I work from home. This is my office right here where I have to work from home. And I'm sure, I'm sure I have people that even follow me that don't like that. Right. A lot of people out there don't like, you know, the idea of the military and people work for them. They think we have a certain personality type and stuff like that, which it really isn't true. But but I'm sure there's people don't like that about me, but they don't say anything about it. Right. But um, you know, and, and I and I've had people uh I met in Vermont going to events out there and they're you know very liberal out there and I and I respect that. And I've had to stay in somebody's home that uh you know it was a, like a bed and breakfast and we got talking, well what did Jack, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, I said I work for the Department of the Army. And I knew what was the reaction was going to be because I heard him kind of tell. He was like, "Oh, oh, well, uh, that's that's interesting." Okay. And then, I, then we got into a conversation about. It. I said, "Well, you know," yeah. I said, I, "I I know what I I know where you're probably coming from, but you know, you have to have a military." Right. I said to protect your own country. I said, and and my perspective on it is, I work in weapons systems development, and you know, if there's going to be armies throughout the world, there's going to be wars throughout the world then I want to make sure our kids, because she had kids too, have the best equipment they can have so they're the ones coming home. There you go. She goes, I didn't think about it that way before. I said, well, now you know where my perspective on it is and why I do the work I do there. Right. And she respected that after that. She didn't totally still agree with it, but she at least respected my perspective on my job and what I was right. doing. Right. So, you know, so you can have a conversation. You can disagree about things, but you can come to some type of agreement, you know, and not hate each other over it, not just assume, oh, that person works for them. They're, so they're just totally jerk. They're just totally, you know, right. wrong. And and that's not the case. There's two sides to every story. Absolutely. You know, you know and in the last three years, I, you know, when we started doing Facebook and stuff and paranormal for sure, I never yeah. used to use the word um, path. Like we're on our own, we're on our own journey and path right now. This yeah, is yeah, sure. So we're, we're, you know, we've, and interject, please, because I'll just blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, we, we started on this, like you were saying earlier in the bio, is, you know, I never, in the paranormal, I didn't feel like, I really thought I, I was always afraid to watch movies, scary movies, et cetera. I never did, blah, blah, blah. Sure. And really, he still is. I still don't like scary movies. <laughs> I, I just don't like them. But, you know, <laughs> but, it, but it all really came to life for me. I mean, and look, everybody thinks, everybody, they're, they're, they, they say the word, gifts and abilities and stuff like that i think we all have abilities i think we're all born with abilities it's like when you're a child and you see something you know we all walk around i think i just saw something in the corner of my eye you know you look yeah. and it's like you know, we all have that that um, 
But, you know, yeah. when it all started for myself, if I can just take 30 seconds, hopefully. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Is, is like you were saying, you know. I, I'll give you a whole minute, minute as a matter of shit, fact. Or I'll yeah. give you a full uh, minute. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, when I, and then we'll go to a couple questions we got. But, no, take your time and, and explain. Well, I hear the same story over and over again because the story is like Judge Judy would say. You know, you don't need to make it up if it's the truth. And, you know, it's one True. of the things, you know. So when for me, I'd when, like to hear your story. I would like to. Oh uh, well, story. the story can get how long do you have? All right, my story's long. <laughs> no. Well, we got as long as you want, but I'm done in an hour. Personally, I'm done in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I cough. I don't have a virus. I swear. Um, <laughs> you can't give it to us anyway. I don't care. Oh God. So when it all started for me, you know, it, you know, 18 years ago, I ended up with cancer. Okay, and during the cancer thing, they, I went through my the radiation. I went through the, I lost my hair. I went through the whole nine yards. And during that time, Kara had to make a decision on something where if they go any deeper, anything can happen. I could lose all my face. I couldn't move my face around for my life. So Kara made the decision on whatever the decision was at that time that I didn't know about. So what happened was and I, that was a hard decision to make for somebody else that would affect their life. Yeah. And it was, yeah. Hard. It was a, a tough, right tough spot to be put in too. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything about it. But I was right. under. Yeah. But during that time, after all that, you know, they told me they six months to a year you have to live. They gave me six months to a year because they didn't know how close it was to your gland in your neck area because it could spread. Right. right. During that time, I you know it was very scary. I something I don't talk about a lot, but I'm going to talk about now because I think you guys That's are okay. Talking about. That's and what we're here I, for. I try to commit suicide, and during that time, because they gave me six months to a year to live, I tried to take my life, and yeah, it didn't happen. It didn't work. And I was like, okay, you know, this, whatever I was thinking back then, it was whatever. I don't right. remember. Well, you were in deep depression. It happens. Um, I have a family member who also tried to commit suicide and she had to go through some, um, some therapy after that, but yeah. it was actually the act of attempting it that kind of woke her up yep. to exactly. what was dealing with her life and it changed her life after that. And, for the and, better. It, and it changed my life. I was never a bad person, but it changed my life. It did nothing happen. And the next thing you know, a year later, two years later, three years later, the doctors was wrong. And now it's 18 years later. I'm cancer free. I'm not, I'm, I'm still here, you know? Right. Yeah. And right. That's what I'm saying. The Absolutely. Yeah. It's such, it's such a, a, a gift. And that's the gift that I've been given by God himself. My gift right. here is, is the gift of life. And my life is why I come across on Facebook or, or whatever, maybe always in a jolly mood, jumping around dancing because Believe it or not, I'm celebrating every single day. I celebrate yeah. my life. Yeah. Yeah. But during that time when I had radiation, I went through a couple of grand mal seizures. And during those grand mal seizures, I think what happened was something opened up up here. There's seizures can never be explained by the by the by the doctors. It just That's happens. right. They don't know why your brain does it, but it does it. And it opens something up. And yeah. since that time, 18 years ago, is mm -hmm. when I started seeing, smelling, feeling, seeing things I couldn't I I, I couldn't tell her. Because I'm like, I'll, I'll sound crazy. So it took yeah. a lot of years into it. And we didn't do paranormal investigating. You know, we didn't do anything like that. But right. I saw things. And to this day, the reason why that I, it's not a light switch. But to this day, yeah. why when we go on investigations is, and such is I see more, I see so much. It's because of not having a gift or abilities. It's because of the seizures and the, gram, and the radiation they did to my head. It yep. is something. We use a certain amount of, I talk a lot, man. We use a well, certain it, percentage of our brain as it is. If it's 12%, that's right. That's 23%. I don't even know what it is. But I do feel when that all happened to me, anybody that's ever had grandma seizures or radiation, I would love for them to tell me one day, a message me, say, you know what? Ever since that, I do see a little more. And that would be just a little bit of validation for myself, thinking it, 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 no. it, it's, it's different. It's different. There's, some, there's a research project for you. Exactly. Seriously, so, but I think I do think I do think it's possible between the the chemo and the, the seizures, yeah. it may have activated a part of your brain that normally we sits dormant. You know, exactly. That we use. I mean, you know, radiation can do a lot of strange things. So you know, and seizures can do a lot of strange things to people. Right. Seizures could have been the the kind of the the trigger of that portion of the brain starting up. Yeah, exactly. you don't know. You know, and yeah. but it's it's it, I think that would be scientifically sound that uh, things like that can change how your synapses fire and which part of the brain 
become more active uh, than another, and uh, it's, it's, it's a possibility. And that's the word you use, it's a possibility. But that's, you know, that's probably the, the hardest thing out there is, is when we go out to investigations and stuff, and, you know, it, it, some people, and it, I'm not here, it, some people are like, what, seriously, come on. But that is, you know, that's the tough thing that we live with every day because we're a team. We've been married. We have been married now for 30 years. So yeah. right. congratulations. Right? Congratulations. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we're everything. We're best friends. We get everything. We do everything together. Paranormal investigating just adds awesome. a chance to stop the pie. So when we go out to investigate, it is, oh, man, we, we get so much evidence because I, again, part of the, part of the ingredients in, in paranormal investigations is having a kind heart. You know, and I think that we carry a kind heart plus whatever. You know, you go into if you go into a place and you're kind of like a, a jerk, I'm not gonna yeah. go sit by you. I'll be like, no, nah, he's putting on some bad vibes. So yeah. why yeah. couldn't the paranormal be exactly the same thing on the other side of the veil? If you go into a location, well, I think that kind heart. I agree with that. I yeah, I, I agree with that, Sarah. You because need I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like anything else. I when I when I give my lectures or when I'm giving my classes, stuff like that, I tell people. You know, talk to spirit like you would like like to be talked to. Like you would be t like when you meet somebody for the first time, you want to get to know them. Talk to them like that. Don't go in and say, "And hey, you know, well, you, like I always tell people, if I walked into your house, right, and met you for the first time, and said, "Hey, do you know your dad? Hey, well, you know, tell me your name. I demand to know your name. I demand. Right. To, I mean, what would you say? You'd be at the typical EVP. I think most people get. Get out. Yeah, exactly. you would say, get, get out of my house. house. Get exactly. the heck out. And about five, they will see you later. It's a nice deal. Yeah. And then they don't they don't talk to you the rest of the time because I'm not gonna talk to somebody who's rude like that. Tell them to get the heck out of my house. Heck exactly. you. Exactly. You know? Well, and I also believe that they know your true intentions. So yeah. you know, yes. they know why you're there. Even if you know you're pretending to be there for a different reason, they know the real reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I believe that. I, they can. It's like people. People, you can know when people's somebody's mm -hmm. real intentions are. You can tell if they're being a little shady or if they're being honest with you. Uh, not a, sometimes you can't, but for the most time part, you can tell people's intention. And the paranormal and people like us who investigate, uh, I always tell people. They say, "Well, you tell people not to investigate their home home, but yet you go into somebody's home to investigate." I said, "Well, it's all about intent." Right. My intention of going to somebody's home is to help them right. and maybe help the spirit, try to help them both try to figure out what's going on. We're not just willing to talk to anybody that's there. Uh, right. I'm not going in <laughs> no there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Communication portals. Yeah. 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 Not, right. I'm not going in there just to say, oh, look, I found evidence of the paranormal. Oh, and my question to people is if you're going to investigate your own home, why are you doing it? Right. Why are you trying to find out? Right. Well, I you just know, want to find I, out if there's a ghost in my house. Don't do that. You'll bring one in. Well, okay, so now, uh, now <laughs> if you don't have one, you're going to no, very shortly. No, <laughs> we, we don't really investigate our own home, but we do have some resident spirits here that actually used to live here. And died. And died here. Right. So we do communicate with them. I mean, we got a couple, we got a really good EVP one time in our bedroom. The, yeah. the man who used to live here, he, he used to fish. And okay. so George was in our room with the EVP recorder talking about, you know, he's going to go fishing and yeah. all this stuff. And he got an EVP of a man saying, I like to fish. It was really cool. Oh, really cool. cool. So he was kind of listening in your conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Along yeah. With what, I, what I tell people is don't try to talk to something that you think is, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't. Yeah. Don't go in and start like, oh, I'm gonna just gonna for no reason just start right. investigating my right. home because I see what happened on TV and I don't know if there's anything here or not, but I want to find out, right? You know, you start doing that, you get problems. In your you know? case, this is a mutual relationship that you guys you guys are living with these people. You know, they're just like humans. They have they have boundaries. They want respect and they will right. give you respect back. So if they want to reach out, they'll reach out, but they'll also do it respectfully because you do it respectfully as well. well Right. You're not right. just and that's saying, it. you know, talk to me because I want to talk to you right now. You're you're talking to them like a friend. Right. Well, exactly. That's, that's, the that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. That's our whole view of you know coexisting with with spirits because I mean, exactly. let's be honest, there are spirits everywhere. They're they're in the yes, there station, you know. So right. right. You know, a lot of people because they see the shows and the show. A lot of the shows, you know, it's all evil and they're demons. They yes. think if they have a, a spirit in their house, it has to leave. Um, so our thought process is, is we'll first find out like who, who the spirit is, like why are they there? Maybe it was someone that used to live there. Maybe it's a family member of yours and learn to coexist, 
you know, it once was their house too, possibly, and they're just there. They're not bothering you or doing any harm. Why make them leave if they don't want to? Right, exactly. right, right, exactly. I get spirits in my home, too. I don't talk to them very much, but I know who they are, too. So yeah. it's like I don't really need to. They're family. So growing, like, up, eh. growing up, I had an imaginary friend that my parents knew about named Wanda, and she happened to be one of my closest friends who was a spirit. Wow. She still stays with me to this day, and you know she was a, she's a little eight year old girl, and you know she's probably one of the closest friends I've ever had in my whole entire life. Uh, spirit yeah. in my home, <laughs> so you know, and you know. Is here to help us too. So mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. Family, they're here to help you. So why make them leave? Exactly. Uh, so that's why we try to empower people on how to coexist with the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. She taught me how to braid my hair. <laughs> did she? Did awesome. she did, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. I, I, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's a it can get strange when a young girl all of a sudden knows how to braid her hair and her mother asks her, "Where'd you learn to braid?" Oh, the little girl taught me. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one standing right next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like right here. Right? There's no That'll thing there. right now. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Like, okay. She must have seen it on Sesame Street, really. That's where she's not sure. That's what yeah. the parents tell themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sesame, Street. Sure, Sesame Street. Sure, it was Sesame Street. Oh, All right, we're gonna jump to we're gonna jump to a couple questions here. Oh. I just want to bring up some stuff because we've been ignoring our friends who are online. We have so many out there. Pamela Phillips, uh, Steve White. I just mentioned this. I'm just gonna throw this up here. Uh, if it'll come up, there it is. Uh, just asked if he was aware of the paranormal investigation they had on Oak Island. Uh, the team that was there confirmed the island had paranormal activity. Um, I did see the one episode. I don't know about a paranormal team, but I did see an episode where, uh, um, oh my God, um, I mean, just one point. Uh, yeah, what's his name from? Well, he he was on the the haunted collector with John Zaffis there. Um, oh my God, my mind just went blank. Anyway. He was on there, and he did some investigating up there, and they caught a couple things and stuff. Uh, but it wasn't a full-blown investigation, investigation. But I, I did hear something that a team had investigated it there at one time. So, But, yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff on that island that, that goes on. One of the people who's on the show um, did say he had his own personal experience, uh, and this was years before they built the causeway, um, that he was staying on the island overnight, and he it freaked him out so much he actually – um, just swam off the island. He didn't even grab the boat. He swam off the island uh, back to the shoreline. It scared him so much. He, he was actually felt he was possessed at one point. And that's one of the older guys that's still on the show. He was one of the original ones working there years ago. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Carly, what questions do we have? Let's see. We oh, have... How is George? Oh, he's 5'5". Five five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you guys saw a question you want to answer, feel free if you spotted something over there. We can't um, see any questions. Oh, okay. You have to go on my Facebook page if you want to look for the question. Uh, oh, um, Bob has a question. Bob Brunel. Okay. Uh, why are there no ghosts of dinosaurs? Why there are, are there no ghosts of dinosaurs? How do we know yeah. they're not? There could be. I have no clue. <laughs> there could be. How do we know? What would we hear? Maybe that's the, maybe maybe that's the strange like roars and people things that people hear in the woods at time to time, but they can't find a source for it. What maybe those are the dinosaurs. What if what if what if that's like pictures of a Loch Ness monster? Is I've never I've never tried to talk to a dinosaur. I don't know if they'd understand me, but uh, right. you know, there yeah. is uh, there is there is reports where people have like uh, and actually there's a there's one road down in Pennsylvania. I forget the road. Maybe somebody on here remembers it. But there's a where there's a mist that appears from time to time, and people can see these strange creatures in it that look prehistoric and stuff, and then they drive out of it, and everything's back to normal. So, and people have heard like something chasing behind them, very big and heavy chasing behind them, and they get out of the mist and it's just gone. So, some people think that's maybe a portal into the past, um, or something where some type of activity from uh, the Jurassic Age does exist. Um, I would think the road would disappear, though, if you were actually passed through into the, uh, another period of time. But the road is still there. They can still see the road, but all these weird, strange things they can see or hear um, happen. So maybe that's something paranormal-wise. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Bob, I'm not sure about that. That's a good question. 
I don't think any of us have tried to talk to anybody from that far back, but I wouldn't I wouldn't see why there wouldn't be spirits of our ancestors, Neanderthal, or things like that. Yeah. They are still human. They still that was a spirit. question I had in my, like, when I first started was, how many of those groans and growls and grunts that you get on EVPs are actually, Probably like... Really human? Really human. I don't know. It could be prehistoric. Could be. Could be. Could, <laughs> they could be. I, how do we know? How do we We don't know. So, I mean, wow. if somebody has a theory on that, throw it out there. People would love to hear yeah, that. Yeah, on doing what we do in the, you know as internal investigators or whatever you yeah. want to call us you know we we just we keep on going and we just we're always going to get the same stuff over and over again i mean i i hope that we get more of course you know but yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a cookie cutter let's be at every location you're going to face you the same you know evps you always get that yes or no i mean i want to have a full-on conversation where it just somehow just manifests and it's like oh my god uncle john what are you doing here you know <laughs> and, so yeah, but you get a lot more. You don't get necessarily yes and no answers. No, no. So right, what we right. like to do is we don't like to ask yes or no questions necessarily. Yeah. Like what he'll do sometimes is he'll count and he'll leave out a number and he'll ask, you know, what number did I leave out? Right. Or I remember one investigation we did at um, the Cohen Bray House in Oakland, California. Um, we were upstairs in the attic, and that's mm-hmm. where the children used to play hide and seek. And he was asking, um, oh, you know, there's this game, you hide, and then I try to find you. It's called hide and, and then you hear a little boy say, speak. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that, you know and, and, and some of the stuff that we do when we go paranormal investigating, you know, I, I watch everybody, you know, from entertainment, TV, to people that right. are doing Facebook. And I always take something away from everybody. You know, I try to because that just makes you a better investigator, right? Absolutely. So I took those away from like, you know, the ABCs or the one, two, three, four, fives or the, or sing a song and leave something out or, or whatever it may be. Because I, I don't know how the paranormal or spirits, it makes me think like, well, how do they still think? Because I'm thinking in my head, I'm saying, okay, so let's play that game, hide in. Oh, I can't think of the name, hide in. And also we get this, this boy saying, seek is wait a second. So are they able to still think to know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, yeah, their, their consciousness is still there. Exactly. And that's why I think when we pass over and the, that, I mean, everybody has their opinions and everything I say today is opinions of my own. Is that veil, are, when we pass over, is that veil so where we can't use our minds to see that they're actually still in front of us? I mean, right. it just, it, the veil, I know the thing is happening now and, you know, it's coming up in the next few months. But it makes me really think, and that's why I'm in love with the paranormal. I'm in love with it because it, it's something new every day when we go paranormal right. investigating. You go bowling and you hit that same mark all the time, you're going to throw a strike. Well, right. it doesn't matter if you hit the same mark every time you go to paranormal investigating. It's always different. Always right. different. Well, and that's why right. it's beautiful. And also another thing we like to do, like, we, like like we, we want to know if they can see us. Yeah. So one time this was Sometimes they time. can. Sometimes yeah. they can. Sometimes they can't. Yeah, um, so. And I say that from my own experiences with it. Um, yeah. We know we're on the USS Constitution. I don't always love what I talk about that. But I do like it because we really had some real interaction with a young boy who was on that ship. He's probably 13, 14, 12 to 14 years old, that'd be my guess. Um, he passed away on the ship. He, um, he, he probably, it was, it was only five boys. And they were boys, they were, you know, back in the 1800s and late 1700s. They were, they were young boys who were, you know, part of the crew on the ship, and they were designated as boys. That was their designation. They could be anywhere from eight years old to 16 years old. Um, And, yeah, that's the way it was back then, people. You know, it wasn't indenturement. Well, it was in a way an indenturement, but they taught these boys, and they paid them, uh, how to become sailors. You know, it was was a job. I mean, you know, you're talking back then. There wasn't a lot of jobs around, people. You worked on a farm or you worked in a factory or you, you created your own business, you know. Um, so for a lot of families, they would send their children, especially the males, out to join the military or something like that because it paid well. The money was sent back to the family until the boys became old enough. and uh, But the boys learned a trade and they learned a job and they had, you know, they had a job for the rest of their lives back then. But some of them did die and there was, there was five that died on the ship and and this kid could see us, and he interacted with us, and he interacted with the crew because uh, they would tell us about this boy they'd see from time to time on the ship. 
running around barefoot, you know, in, in you know, period clothing, you know, from, from back then. And he was still there and he was still responding and answering us. And we caught his voice a lot of times. And, and he was still learning because the way we found that out, I had an EVP. It's still my favorite. It's this same boy's voice. We caught his voice. I don't know how many times. Um, but it was the second night of the investigation, and the boatswain's mate who was with us was giving a tour uh, of the, the, the main gun deck on the ship. And there's a forward section of it called the manger. He goes, this is where they kept live animals on the ship for food. Back then, there was no refrigeration, people. Um, so they kept live animals. And they butchered them as they need them. And he said, yeah, they kept cows, pigs, chickens. And you hear me in the, on the audio go, hmm. And then you hear this young boy's voice go, and a bear in a very heavy New England accent, and a bear. Well, there was a black bear cub kept on the ship as a mascot in 1932 ah. while the ship was making its world cruise. Now, those five boys all died in the 1800s. So wow. how does a boy who died in the 1800s know about this black bear from 1932? If he's not still learning, his consciousness is still there. He's still learning. He's still interacting. And he was able to actually move things when he wanted to. Wow. which is very interesting. So wow. he has a very strong energy. His energy is still strong. He's still there. He's still on that ship to this day, wow. as far as we know. We didn't chase anything off. We weren't asked to. I didn't move anything on. He seemed pretty happy there. He was laughing and joking, playing jokes on us by moving doors and, and all wow. kinds of... We even caught him laughing. We even caught him on EVP laughing, you know, wow. as he was moving a door, you know. And then we, as, as that happened, you hear me and the other investigator, I got chills going right, waves of chills going up through me. And we're talking about that while his, he's laughing at that moment. So it's kind of funny. The energy is, is passing through you. you know? yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. But yes, they are still, some of them are still, you know, they still have their consciousness. Yeah, They're well, still in, there. In our old house, we had a spirit there who actually uh, died while building our house. Oh, and, wow. Uh, so we would talk to him every once in a while. And one night, you know, we wanted to see if he could see us. So we were sitting right. in, in the living room on the couch and we were talking and we were talking about, we were pretending like we were actually in the kitchen and we said something about, oh, you know, can you see us in the kitchen? And we got an EVP that said, no, you're not. We were in so the living room. So we knew we weren't in the kitchen. Yeah. We were actually, he could see us in the living room. Right. So. Um, I remember that. That was great. Hi, Andy. Andy. Yeah, I wanted you guys to see that because he was saying hi to you. So I threw it up there for you. <laughs> so Barry actually has a question for George. Okay. Yep. Here's a... um, how Where... did you like your ghost adventures experience with Zach, Aaron, Jay, and Billy at the Kennedy Mine, if that's the correct location? Absolutely. I loved it. I, I'm not, I mean, I look, I, I, it was something in the past, and I had a great time. I, I, it was something that's, that is, uh, I don't like using it, but I'm on um, the old uh, memory resume. How's that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a blast. Hey, I, to... I know a lot of people don't like Zach. I know that. Ah, but you know but I, I will say this. Yeah. Zach, I, I, I don't have any issues with Zach. Zach is yeah. who he is. He's a very type A personality. But Zach has built a business for himself. He's it, built an empire. And, and I think that's always what he wanted to do. And, 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 and the next person to do it, I talked to Dakota every so long. Well, and it's been, since he started his new show, I don't yeah, talk to him yeah, about yeah. anymore. But uh, to Ghost Adventures and stuff, you know, Zach gets a bad rap, and what you just said is exactly true. Like, you know, can you imagine being worth millions, if not billions of dollars, and you have this responsibility, and it doesn't make him a jerk, it just means no. he's a businessman. He's a businessman, that's he's absolutely a, true. I think if you asked him straight out, Zach, are you a paranormal investigator? He'd probably say, no, I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman, and that's it. But and he's right, and he, 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 he does investigate, he does do different things. But he's a businessman, first and foremost. You know what? Kudos to him, man. I mean, I tell people, I said, you may not like him, but who's had the longest running uh, paranormal TV show on television? 19 season, I think, right? There's 1920 season. He's doing something right. Yeah. So he's doing, that's right. He's doing something right. He's got his following. And, I still watch and in the end, that's what TV is. Entertainment. It's entertainment. And, it's and about you, entertainment. And look yeah. at you. Look at you, young lady. You're absolutely right. You know, all. let's think of all the shows that... They're great shows to watch. We love the paranormal, but they're called entertainment. And that is why it's all about numbers. Right. And they'll do whatever they need to do to do the numbers. And exactly. you know, there's some great shows out there right now. I'm blessed to watch this, be in this lifetime. I like, I, I, uh, I love, I'm going to say, I love Ghost Hunters. I like yeah. what they're doing. 
I yeah. love you. And they're down to earth and, and they're grounded. They're very, they, they're doing a damn good job. They are. They are. They, you know, they really are. But you, when you were at the question about Ghostman, they're all, I'll say it. I got to work four days with them and they are all great guys. And I take away a lot of great memories. I take away a lot of, of good times. And what was mostly is I got to take away how to investigate a different way. Because I took yeah. something from Aaron and Dakota That's and, right. and, Joe, and uh, Billy and Jay. And they all got a, yeah, they all got a lot of great knowledge and they got a lot of great skills. They're good yeah. people. You yeah, know, a lot of people, I, I think sometimes people start to not like people because they are successful. And, you know, and they, don't, they don't necessarily like the way they got successful, but you know, yeah. I tell people all the time, TV is TV. TV is not about invest is, is not about the real investigating. It's about being entertaining. It's entertainment. Even the shows that I'm on and the stuff that they do, yeah, okay. Eighty I mean, ours is a little different. We get interviewed, we talk about our actual investigations. So eighty percent of it is actually correct. The other ten percent that they do the reenactments, oh yeah, they make shit up. Yeah, it's like I should like the guy who plays me, we call him Fake Jack, right? Yeah, Michael. Um, uh, I forget my. Uh, I forget his You're last name. You're much better looking than he is. I I always thought the opposite, truthfully, but you know, but <laughs> but he's 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 an actor, a singer, and a songwriter, and uh, you know, but he's he. I always say he acts. He, his acting is along the lines of uh, William Shatner. Oh my God! Did you hear the ghost? Oh, <laughs> no. I texted Jack I, when I, they got be so animated. Uh, when he, I'm out investigating. I should do that animated. When I'm out. He's like, I'm not watching the episode right now. I'm letting the dog out, and I'm watching the dog. And I go, apparently you had a heart attack in the kitchen because you heard some footsteps up above. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I get a, he's on the radio. Ellen, did you hear the footsteps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was like, no, it was more like, hey, Ellen, did you hear some footsteps upstairs? Right. <laughs> well, you know, if, 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 if TV ever came around again, you know what? I, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm a ham. You know what? I love people. Uh, you know, That's people. Right. Right. Just, oh God! You know, I yeah. got crud for even trying to be an uncle. I got total crud for it. Oh, you know, you're a sellout, isn't that? But you know what? Yeah. If I had an opportunity again, I would because you know what? I want to travel. I want to go to different locations, and 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 like Waverly Hills is both sure. of our. Bu We've never been to Waverly. That is my. I not there either. I want to go so bad, and, and I can't because. Everything, you know, money, there's a money tree out there, but it's, it's dead right now, right? We have water. Too. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Hey, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not going out spending too much money right now. Save that money up so you can go to Waverly Hills. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, I, I to answer that, back that question, I, I had a great time and uh, it's a great memory and yeah. I, I, I'll always have it and it's beautiful. I, I had a great time and so did Karen. We both had a great time for four days. I got now. interviewed and I got cut out. Oh yeah, yeah, you know the editing, the whole editing thing. I don't get it. You know, whatever. I still hear about it though, guys. I always they edit I, out, they edit out stuff every time I go and film too. I mean, you know, I don't know. yeah, it happens. And I'm actually I don't worry about it. On it, so you know, I yeah. never let them get that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know what? I, I when they do that, I don't worry about it. What I what bothered me uh, once, and uh, and I actually called the producer and I told him, I said, "Don't do ever do that again." Is when they put words in my mouth I never said. Right. Right. That happened on one episode, and I'm like, I know what you did. I right. said, don't do it again, or I won't work with you again. Right. And he's like, he apologized. He says, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again, right. and uh, and it never has. And uh, they're but they're 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 good people, and I've been very lucky uh, and very blessed to be on different shows, and and I look wow. at it that way, and I try to use it to for my portion to tell people, okay, here's what really happened during our investigations. Here, right. here's what I experienced. And teach a little bit. I mean, teach people that, you know, not everything is demonic. Not everything is evil. Not exactly. everything is, is negative. Sometimes right. in a case, you end up helping the spirit rather than the people that called you in. You right. know, uh, and that happened on one of the cases, a Jamaica Plain case that was on Horner Case Files. Right. Um, we actually were able to help that spirit. And I, I will tell you, I've told other people this too. While I was filming that portion and I had to tell finally tell the the spirit's story hannah hannah was the, the spirit's name she actually channeled through and kind of took over and i found myself just sitting there listening to myself talking and saying what happened what really happened this is what really happened wow. and it was like she was saying this is what happened to me 
sit back, Mr. Ken. I'm going to, you gave me my chance. You promised, because I did make a promise to that spirit that I'd find a way to tell her story or, you know, get her story told. And it, and it, and it fell out. And then, and the whole crew was like standing there at the end of it, because I was actually crying at one point by oh, the wow. end of it. And they're like, are you okay, Mr. Kenna? And I'm like, suddenly snap back at him. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that was me talking. And, I, and they're like, what? I, and I told them what I thought happened. Wow. And and you kind of you kind of hear it. I don't think they totally showed everything, but you see me have a reaction. And then you hear me talking while they're doing a reenactment portion. But you can hear it. You can hear the you can hear it in my voice. You can hear the emotion in my voice. Oh, wow. So I think Hannah finally is able to come through and tell her story and everything you know, kind of calmed down after that. So, so I gave that spirit her opportunity and like I had promised, I would try to, and she came through in the end wow. and I was up in Canada filming and that spirit was you know, something I ran into that back in Massachusetts. So we don't know how the spirit world works, right? Was she hanging out with me whole time waiting for this opportunity or did she show up when that opportunity arose? I don't know. I feel you know. like sometimes like when you're talking about them, like, you know, with your family members, like um, if when you think about them or you talk about them, that's when they're yeah. Gonna yeah, and I, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's when she came through. She knew her story was being told, and, and I already made a connection with her at the uh, the place that we investigated. So right. uh, she came back and she said, "Wow, actually, that guy, guy is actually being honest. He he found me a way to to tell my story. Okay, I'll tell it. Take." Step aside, Mr. Kenna. I'm going to tell it myself. <laughs> so well, and it was, and it was told. And actually, that was one of the the most top rated episodes they had. And it had nothing to do with anything being demonic or evil or anything like that. Right. So, you know, go figure. You know, it, it's not always about that. But I try to, to offer some learning experience to people. And, you know, uh, like a good friend of mine told me when I was going to be doing all this stuff the very first time, I reached out to my friend Dustin Perry. And I said, hey, Dustin, you know, I'm going to be doing this show or whatever. Is, is there any advice you can give me or anything? He goes, yeah, be yourself. That's it. He goes, just always be yourself because who people see on TV is who they expect you to be later on. Right. He goes, so if you're always yourself, you never have to pretend to be something you're not. I that said, good, is, that's, that's, that's that a good is, point. That's a great So that's always, as you see me on those shows, that's who I am. No, that's a great, and, and, and it goes for who you see over here. What you see, this hyper guy that's never, he's always dancing around and trying to be goofy and make people smile. It's exactly the same guy if you meet me or anybody meets yeah. me in person. Guess what? You're going to yeah. get that same character. Oh, it's George, so we can tell that, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we love about you. That's what we love about you. You are who you are. I have, you know, I'm an open book. I, I just, if everybody would just, you know, I, I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm a student in the paranormal world. I'm a student in life. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, when paranormal investigating or whatever you go paranormal yeah. investigating, if I can just get one person just to just be themselves, you'll get maybe more evidence. Just 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 be yourself, man. It, it's so easy yeah. to be yourself than be not yourself. You know, like you said, yeah. It, yeah. I'd rather go to every 100 people's homes and every all of them might be exactly the same guy at each home. You right. know, and, well, that's how people know you're sincere and honest, and exactly. you are who you are, and that's, that's where it goes. I don't even care. And, yeah, and and when this is all over, uh, I'll, I'll say for the first time tonight, we, we may have something very special coming in the coming year once this whole virus thing is over. Yeah. Um, there may be something that might come to fruition here for a, a new uh, show, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll just say that much about it, and and but nothing's gonna happen until we can all travel. Nothing's gonna happen until we can all travel again. So nothing's going anywhere until we can travel. Right now, we're in New York. We have to be quarantined. And you know, it could always, so. yeah, it could always. People can change their minds too, and you know, uh, yep. you know, Hollywood's a exactly. fickle place. So, but but right now, things are, are there is some plans and there is some things being being talked about, and we'll see what happens. Though. And you can't, um, you can't say like it's no. Everybody, I can't tell you a damn podcast. thing. No, I could just say that there's something maybe in the works. That's all I could tell you. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was uh, totally unexpected. Right. I, it was nothing anybody applied for or nothing anybody put out there. It was just a phone call. Well, it came that, that, that somebody coffee. called me. Somebody called me and totally shocked me. So, uh, if, you need someone, if you need someone just to get you coffee, watch it. I'm really good at it. Sir, what kind okay. of coffee? Okay. <laughs> George, I'm for that. I'm all, I'm all for that. Yeah. That's awesome. 
I can always use coffee. Yeah, you know. Oh, uh, let me see. Did you... I haven't seen many. Oh, somebody just talks. No, I haven't really seen too many questions today. I think because people just want to listen to your guys' story today. So Andy says, "I was lucky to meet Doogie and Mike G from Tennessee." I know Doogie. I know. I know those Mike. guys are cool. Yeah, yeah, I know those guys. Yeah, Doogie's a, a good. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a good friend. He's, They're really he's quiet right friend. now. Huh? So They're Scott. Fine. Well, you gotta remember, nothing's going on. Nobody can film. No, Hollywood's shut down. Production yeah. facilities are all shut down. Nobody's working because they can't film. Right. You know, so it's killing the industry out there. They're gonna be ready and raring to go. I think once they all come back, um, you know. But uh, right now, yeah, things are quiet. There's no events anybody can do. Right. I mean, I still keep in touch with some of these people that are out there just because you know we're friends. We just chat once in a while. Right. We talk about things that are coming up and maybe things we want to do. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, you see a lot of people on these types of shows and stuff, you know. They come yeah. on to things. I mean, I was just talking with uh, Brandon um, the other night on uh, Alex, my friend Alex's show here, Alex, uh, Alex King. He does American Ghost Hunter now that used to be uh, Mr. Marston's uh, show, but Alex took that over since uh, he had to leave the show. Um, and we had uh, – Brandon there from Ghost Hunters on, and nice guy, great stuff. I sent him something he was going to review for me, and I don't know if he's gotten the chance to yet, but he was going to get back to me. And our friend Keith Bailey, I was going to mention Keith out there. He's a good friend of ours. He's on our paranormal team. He just says hi to us, Carly. Okay. Uh, hey, Keith. And Ed's so, on. Um, yeah, Dan Place is on. And Dan is on, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan had mentioned something about uh, – uh, it's not the type of spirit you drink or to, to somebody else on there. But I will say this, Dan, it may not be the, you know, the type of spirit you drink, but if I drink enough spirits, I start to see some other kind of spirits. So <laughs> I, don't I don't drink them, so it doesn't happen to me. Right. Drink it up, you'll see a lot of spirits. That's all. Yeah. Pink elephants, pink whatever, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. I don't drink that. I really don't drink that. Yeah. I do like wine. I do like a, a, a couple glasses of wine once in a while. I am a. a, a we, you know, we, a, you know, we live not too far. Well, yeah, you guys don't live too far from wine country out your way. I, I live not too far. Yeah, we got New York State wine country. I'm only like an hour and a half from there. Right. You guys are in California, right? Yeah, we're in California, yeah. but we don't, you know, I, we, uh, we're, we don't. We don't drink, but hold on a moment here. And a lot well, I like a glass of wine once in a while. I don't drink. I don't sit there. A good bottle of wine. It was really good. One of my employees' uncles owns a, a winery here, and he gave us a case of wine. Oh, it's really so good. Now, That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, I, I got to get out to the guys from Oak Island. They have a winery. They own a winery. Uh, uh -huh. Rick and Marty. Yeah, Rick and Marty own, own a big winery. I love to get out to their winery. Sometime. I think they're out your way. I think they're out in California. Either California or out west someplace. I forget. Yeah. Look yeah, oh, they got a nice winery out there. My college is based off of in California that I'm going to. That's right. Your college is, yes. is based oh. on Academy of Art University. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's over um, near yeah. LA, I think, actually. In um, downtown. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have friends out. I have other friends out in California out there. Uh, um, uh, uh, Colleen uh, Rose and uh, Ed uh, Mertz Scandunas who used to be the, uh, they used to run um, uh, San Diego Ghost Hunters. I met them out there years ago. Okay. Um, and then uh, I've got uh, my daughter lived, uh, my one daughter, uh, stepdaughter, I should say, still does live out there in, in San Diego area. And then um, that's who Laura and her husband. And then uh, my other daughter, uh, uh, Olivia, um, and her wife, um, uh, lived out in uh, California, up in Northern California, up around Joshua Tree kind of area, right. further up that way. And then uh, they're out in Colorado now. They live out in Colorado now. Um, so oh, no, yeah, yeah, you got families. You know, I got the uh, family all over the place. So really. yeah, yeah, we're right in the middle of California. We're like like outside of Sacramento, hour and a half from Sacramento. Oh, oh, where, oh where? I, I used to go to Sacramento a lot because it was a business out there I worked with. Uh, oh. my, yeah, with the Department of the Army, we were doing some. Uh, they were making uh, castings and stuff for us for different things that we were working on, and uh, we went to another facility about an hour and a half north of of their facility in Sacramento. I can't remember the town it was now, uh, but we made the drive. We had to drive an hour and a half up to this. Um, uh, it, it, well, it's a plant, you know, that made castings. So okay. we wanted to see our castings being done up there and stuff. I just can't remember the town. 
No, city. I should say it was a city. I can't remember the city. Or that. But that's a good area you guys are so in. Probably wasn't too far from me is my point. I probably wasn't. That yeah. was only, How's the traffic? That was maybe five, six years ago. But. There's no traffic. Now there's <laughs> none. Now there's none. It's wonderful. Yeah. But you know, like the only thing about traffic, we, yeah. we both commute about an hour to work. So um, we're enjoying the no traffic. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, we live in a little city. Um, it's kind of. It's a town. It's, it's a okay. little, technically it's a city, but it's more like a town. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have a lot of or cherry orchards. It's about to become cherry picking season. So it's kind Ooh, of a really cool. town. Um, so we like it. It's laid back. It's, it's Brentwood. And it's funny because there's a Brentwood in Southern California where all the rich people live. Yeah, <laughs> so when we say we live, we live in Brentwood, people just assume that we live no. down there. <laughs> like, <I went. laughs> That's like us with New York City. Whatever. We're like, yeah, we're from New York. They're like, oh, the city? That's so cool. I'm like, no. no. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, just looking at, I'm just looking at all the, the, the messages online. I got to throw this one up here. Looks like people were talking about emotions and stuff. And my sister posted this. Uh, and I'll tell you what this is about. She goes, I have no emotions. I don't exist. And what that what that's about is um, she went to go on to the Social Security website uh, about a, a week last week. Or no, a, a while back. It was a while back. Anyways. She couldn't remember her password, so she had a request one. They say, well, we'll mail a new one to you in 10 days or so. Well, it's been like three weeks. So she finally called over Social Security Day and got a hold of somebody. She called them. Now, she went onto the website, called the 800 number, so it's not a fake thing or anything like that. Right. And she's talking to the guy, and the guy says, um, ma'am, we have a problem. You're, you're, not in the system. you're, you're not here. You're not, you're not, you're not you're in the system. Good. She's like, what? What are you talking about? He goes, she goes, did you lose my information? Did you have my number? He goes, no, you don't exist. You're not in the system at all. Wow. What? Not wow. in the system at all. I'm like, she's like, well, then who, how, why have you been collecting uh, Social Security from me for like decades now? You know? right. <laughs> she goes, yeah, must have had it at one point. You got that. Yeah, the number's there. Yeah, he's like, no, it's not in the system. You don't exist in the system. Wow. I'm like, holy oh, shit. Wow. So he had to get his supervisor, and they had to re-put in all her information from years back, first place she worked up until, until now. And I'm like, what if they still? I'm like, what if they still? They told her she didn't exist. I'm like, it sounds like somebody hacked their system or somebody's screwing something. Right. You know, how do you lose somebody in the system? How do they not be there at all? I mean. It, it, <laughs> you know, because she had, had an online account, she went into it months ago, but she hadn't been in it in months, and she forgot her password. So she's like, "I was in there before. So how can you tell me that you, it doesn't exist? You don't exist. You don't, you're not. You're not alive. You don't. You don't well, I feel really bad. That would be That's why she says, "I have no emotions. I don't exist." <laughs> you, can't, yeah, you can't have emotions if you don't exist at all. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so be careful out there, people. I don't know what's going on, but you may want to be looking into what's going. You know, it, it happened to one person. God right. knows what's happened with all this stuff that's going on. Did they did they delete shit by who the hell knows? I'm gonna be checking on mine this week too. I think. So who the, who the hell knows? <laughs> like uh, nobody exists anymore. Nobody is out there. Uh, oh my god! How do you, yeah, because I said you know what you should do. Say well then all that money you collected all those years for that number, send it to me. I want it back. <laughs> you took it out of all my paychecks all those years. I want all that money sent back to me because I don't exist, according to you. <laughs> wow. So you took it from nobody. Give it back to nobody. <laughs> You'd be a millionaire. You know? Right. Um, shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's why that she, she posted that. She, she, according, to the, to, according to Social Security, she does not exist. Uh, she does now, I guess, though. He goes, give it 24 hours. It should be back in there. Like, oh, my God. So to, you got to worry about everything these days. I mean, everything. It's crazy. He ran away. Very good. Okay, so we're uh, done for tonight, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, oh, <laughs> he got the dog out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I heard a oh. dog growling before. I think it's a good day. No, no, I'm back already. Wait a second. <laughs> I, did. I, did. I knew I heard a dog before. We have a I knew I heard a dog. He was kind of like mumbling this way, wasn't he? Oh, it's our dog, and you hear heavy breathing. I'm all, 
And I know she's like, uh, Daddy, you, are we going to walk later? I'm like, yeah, 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 we're going to walk. Just relax. Uh, Daddy's got a show. Hush up. And if you hear dogs, <laughs> it's not us. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, man. This dog is, she's a great dog, though. I mean, she's a great dog. She's a rescue. Like, no, this is not a rescue. No. No. We have three dogs, so uh, he gets confused. Yeah. In a way, the dogs rescue us, though. Yes. I oh, was Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so do cats. I'm a cat person, so cats rescue us. Yes. Carly knows. She's got her favorite cat. Her I've cat. Adopted My cat, cat loves her. Now. Loves her. Loves her. <laughs> Candace, says that if, if, if Candace says it will happen to me for sure then. She, she will not exist anyway. Uh, yeah, you better check on your social security number, Candace, see if you're actually out there. Yeah, um, see if you're still here. Maybe that's not I, her. I wonder whether she really exists anyway. I don't know. I don't know if she does. I, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I think she's a figment of my imagination that just talks to me. From she's an awesome figment of your imagination. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's kind of a, a, a yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it's if you gotta if you gotta have a crazy imaginary friend, Candace is the one to have. You George. I'll give you. A, you know, put you two together, I'd be like, it, I would just go insane. You, you know, know one on each show talking to me at the same time, it'd be like, oh my god. I mean, no, I when they do, when they finally, I just had a brain whatever. But you know, when they do open up the gates and we can all go paranormal investigating, it's gonna be a shit show out there. I think everybody's just going to like it. Everybody, all millions of people are going to be out investigating. Because I do believe it's, well, it's, it's everybody's like craving to get outside. We might be able to go investigate on Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, that's right. I made reservations at a haunted hotel before the whole coronavirus oh, thing. Yeah, nice, nice. So I emailed them yesterday asking, I'm like, are you guys still open? We have reservations. And she said, well, we're closed. But if you guys still want to come, we can uh, accommodate you, but you'll probably be the only ones there. Oh, like, shoot. Oh, that's yeah, perfect. I'm going to go, man. This time to go. In fact, I got to call, call my friend. Uh, I got to get in touch with my, my friend, um, um, uh, Pamela Barry. Pamela and Steve Barry. We got to get in touch yeah, with her. Yeah. And see yeah. when we can get down to their place again. Um, and, and, you know, they, yeah, come June, July, they might accommodate us, too. So. I actually had something reserved for June because we were supposed to all be doing an event, but the event got canceled. So, um, right. but yeah, if you ever, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's a place. Well, they're in Pennsylvania, so they're right. not too, too too far for us. About five hours, but they got a nice bed, uh, bed and breakfast down there that is definitely haunted. I've I experienced oh, yeah. it's crazy the stuff. The lookout house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had something walk right through the bedroom while I was there, laying there looking. I was watching that. I could hear the footsteps cross right in front of me. And it's like I'm looking. It's like there's nothing there. Okay, all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. isn't, that isn't that one of the many reasons? It why is. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I didn't run. I didn't care. No, <laughs> and I think that's where people, some people, make a mistake. Where you know they get all. I mean, there's a time to be serious. I get it. You know, there's a time to be an adult in the paranormal. But yeah. you know, the day that it's not fun anymore is the day that you say, you know what, I'm going to find something else to do. You know, you got to have fun to what you do. We live once yeah. and, and, and just have fun. And yeah. fun is fun. Paranormal investigating is just fun. It's just yeah. a blast. Well, you know? there's times it can be a little freaky when you do cases like we do and you get some demonic stuff once in a while. Truly oh, demonic stuff. Absolutely. Or boring when nothing um, happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually it's you think nothing's happening until you go back through all your audio. Then it gets exciting. Yeah. See, that's why if we had an actual TV show representing what real investigation would be, it wouldn't get anything because it would just be, would people it. It'd be too damn talking boring. in a dark room, hoping yeah. that they get some and I, answers. And I know, and I know, an hour you after. And I know <laughs> my investigator friends out there, you're mad at me for that right now. I was like, it's important to show real investigation. I get it, but. Would you really want to watch that show? I, I, I have to watch it when I have to watch review and evidence. God's wow. sakes, it's boring as hell. You know, the, the one show, the one show they took away from us, it was my. I mean, there's something I would I, on my bucket list. I want is Paranormal Lockdown. Well, yeah. yeah, I love that show. I'm like, I, yeah. somebody lock me down somewhere, lock me in, because that to me is the ultimate. To me, is the ultimate goal of mine. Just lock me up in a dungeon. I'll stay there for 24 hours. Well, we have candy bars. And I'm set. And some coffee. Well, well you know why that yeah, show didn't coffee. get renewed, right? right. You, you, you do know why that show did not get renewed, right? Why? I don't know. It has to do with Zach and. Oh, okay. Yeah. They were moving it to the the the, the uh, travel channel. 
Oh. And Zach is the guy for the Travel Channel. Wow. He's, he said, if you bring him over here, I'm leaving. Wow. See, oh, yeah, so they, I, my understanding is they have some bad blood between them. Yeah. And, wow. and I don't know what it is, and I don't know what happened. Um, neither one of them will talk about it, and, and that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. And you know what that is? That they won't, they won't, well, they won't, they, they, don't, they won't air their dirty laundry out there. Right. Um, somebody asked Nick why once did why, once or a few times why did you leave Go, uh, Ghost yeah. Adventures? He said I never left anything. Right. Uh, he left it at that, and uh, I think they just had a falling out, which friends sometimes do. Yep. Um, and they went their own ways, but there's still just that bad blood that when they were going to move it over the Travel Channel, right. um, Zach just said, "If you bring him here, I'm leaving." And Zach is too big; they weren't going to let him leave. Yeah. So. They, they Zach, didn't bring that show over, so that show just ended. No, absolutely. Um, Zach, like I said, Zach and, and, and Nick, they, they, they look like they would all get along just, you know, they look, I wish one day they do, because they did put out good, a good, I, uh, they did a great job together. They, they always did. They always did, and I love the earlier episodes with the two yep. of them. Yep. I don't know what happened between them. I wish they could find a way to, to, wow. to you know, bury that hatchet, so to speak, although mm -hmm. they Literally bury it in one of each other's heads. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If they gave them each one, they might. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. But uh, you know, you wish people could find a way to. I don't know what it was. I, I don't know the details. Yeah. It's it's just, and nobody ever really. I don't think really said that, but it's very obvious that that's the case. That something happened. Right. That right. they just didn't come to an agreement on something, or they just really. You know, it happens everywhere, though. It friendship, happens everywhere. friendship yeah. broke up. Yeah, their friendship broke up, and, it and that is what TV does sometimes. Well, when you're getting in that close, when you're in that kind of business, and you're you're on a TV show together, and you're doing that, it becomes more of a marriage, really. Yeah. It is just a, a friendship or a partnership, right? So basically, yeah. they ended up in a divorce, you know, and that's yeah. You know, yeah, and that's why you didn't see Nick on any shows for a long time. He couldn't by contract. Right. Um, you know, he, he couldn't re, you know, because they have like a five year moratorium thing where you can't do anything uh -huh. um, once you're off a show uh, for five years, anything similar, or anything like that. That's why you saw Nick kind of just disappear for a long time. Well, he's got a good partner at the time. I mean, we, we've been thankful to work with Elizabeth Saint. Uh, we had some fun yeah, with her. She's great. She's a great girl. And I, I and this was a couple of years ago, everything's a couple of years ago, but. You know, they, they seem to do really well together when they did that. I forget the name of the show now. Oh, Ghost of Shepherd's Town. Oh, Ghost of Shepherd's Town. Oh, yeah. Ghost it, was okay. yep. it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't great. It was okay. I, liked, I actually liked Ghost of Shepherd's Town. I actually did really like that show. I, I, I thought it was a well-built story. Right. Uh, I know they did real investigations, but I think what they did with that is they, they were doing real investigations in different locations around that town, but right. they tied a, a story into it. To make it much more interesting, right? So I think that's the ten percent. That story is the ten percent. You know, Hollywood, right? There's the story behind the investigations yeah. to make it make it more cohesive. So actually, in a way, I kind of liked that uh, approach to it. It's it's kind of like when I've written my book, uh, Hauntings, Ghosts, and Demons. I based it uh, several of the stories on our real investigations. But I play them up a little bit more. I mean, just to make it more fun to read. But I used real investigation techniques, and I used real locations we investigated, and there is real evidence written into those stories. That you can go onto our website and, and either listen to those actual EVPs or look at the actual footage. So, right. but yeah, you know, there's parts of it I, I made made up a little bit, so it was more exciting to be to be to the reader. So it brought you into the investigation. And I think that's what they were trying to do with Ghost of Shepherdstown. I'm not saying what they investigated was fake, not at all. Oh, no. I think the evidence and everything else, the actual investigating they did was real. But right. I think the backstory of it leading up to this woman who was accused of being a witch, I do believe that was kind of just a made up thing. I may be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Right. But I think that was a story that was developed to make it more interesting. And, right. and I think it was a great move on, on, on the story uh, part right. for TV. You know? yeah, I, and then, I, and then I, they I, did Paranormal Lockdown, which is strictly investigating, going to locations, investigating, finding your evidence, which I think I think that's where Portals to Hell came from. I think they renamed it, sure. and and they brought in, what's his name, uh, Osborne? 
uh, Jake, was it Jack, Jack Osborne? Yeah. And, uh, and put her with, uh, put him with, uh, uh, what's her name there? Right. Uh, rather than being Nick. So I think that's where Portals to Hell came from. Well, the one if, the show maybe I'm wrong about that too, but it wow. seems like that's what happened. You're wrong. You're, you know who you are. You're never wrong. I'm just guessing based on some hints. That's all. <laughs> well, you know, the one show that I'm really is, is that we don't want to miss any of it is the new one with Dakota. Destination Fear. Destination Fear. I, I yeah. liked his first season. I did like his first season. Yeah, yeah. it was. It, it, I there, will say Chelsea's yeah. a badass man. Exactly. Pro Chelsea. She is like a hockey superstar slash paranormal investigator. Like, dude. She is a badass. That is, is the best way to put it. A total badass. And she they, is. Do, they do, like you said, the first season they did really well too. And it's gonna continue. He's the up and coming when when Zach retires and becomes just a mom, the guy that just as a producer. I yeah. think he goes on, he's gonna be in this for I think till he wants to end. I think he's, you know, he's a good-looking guy, and you know, part of it is is, is ratings and da 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 da. Uh, he's gonna sell just because of his, his mug. He's a good-looking guy. Yeah. He yeah, learned so. a lot from Zach, and Zach did a very good job teaching him. I watched, I saw them. I went to a panel at Comic Con, and what? I was sitting there, and there were literally people peeking into the doors, like just trying to get a glimpse of these guys because to most people, it's their idols. You know, like that's that's who they see every day on the TV with reruns and stuff. So, you know, um, it, Dakota, you know, learned a lot from Zach, and I think that he took what well, he I think learned he's, I think and he's he still learned a lot. Applied it, too. yeah. But I think yeah. from what he learned from Zach during yeah. that time, he applied it very well. Right. To, I, I think Zach is still involved. Is what I'm saying. What's that? Well, yeah, I but think I mean, Zach is still involved with, with, his, with his series. Right. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. I haven't looked at the credits, but I think Zach Vegas is probably in there somewhere. You know, Zach, right. has, uh, Zach has, in a good way, he's a very smart man. He has yeah. his hand in the cookie jar on every show. Mm -hmm. is, and he's a smart young man. But I, you know, I, I do believe when I got to meet, meet them, it was you could just tell that Zach was definitely taking Dakota under his wing. Oh, yeah. He liked him. Yeah, he definitely liked the kid. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Liked. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's why I'm saying I think he's still mentoring him. I think he's still working with him. You know, I, I, I why would you not mentor Zach though? Because he's such a, a successful young man. Absolutely, he's especially on the business. Well, especially on the business end of things too. Absolutely. Where you tell him, hey, make sure when you do your contracts, you do this and do that, and you know. Absolutely. You know, he may help him out with that too. I don't know. Absolutely. But, why not? But yeah, okay. because he likes. He really. You could tell he really liked him uh, when why he not? had him on his show. You know. Yeah. So, Chipling the dog out. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, it is. Uh, you guys can stand. It's nine thirteen p.m. Um, I'm just gonna give my quick thing. If you're looking for any good reads out there, people, uh, you can check out my books on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Just do a search for Jack Kenna. You will find them. Uh, the books will pop up right away for you. So you've got uh, my paranormal research book, which is great for if you're wanting to learn about investigating and. And all that, that's the book I use for my classes. Or if you just want a fun read, uh, Haunties, Ghosts, and Demons is out there. I'm also working on a couple of the books. I also have my comic book out there, which is uh, Spirits of Forgotten Souls of Bay Path, also based on one of our teams. Everywhere. Yeah, hey, we got stuff everywhere. Yes, and uh, I may actually even be looking at doing a second uh, uh, comic for that. Um, uh, in this coming year, I'm going to be back, I think, re reaching back out to... Uh, uh, the gentleman who illustrated that for me the first time, Alex Cormack, great illustrator. He does a lot of work for a lot of the the um, uh, different uh, comic book companies. He even worked done work for I believe DC and uh, DC Comics and and um, a Dark Horse and stuff like that. So he's he's very he's a very talented individual. I am kind of going to reach out to him and see if we can do another another comic. So maybe we may do it into a three part series comic. So we'll take it little by little here. So yeah, uh, anyways, you can find all my stuff online there. Uh, I'm going to head on out. You guys can still hang out and chat if you like. Um, I have some questions for you. Yeah, she has questions <laughs> for you. So there you go. I got to go catch Oak Island. I told you that. Thanks for having us. Seriously. Thank you. Oh, thanks for being on the show. You guys are great guests. We'll have to have you guys back again, too. And we'll try to really answer some, uh, find some questions out there for you to answer. Everybody is so enamored listening to you. They actually just all started. 
like chatting amongst itself about all this stuff. <laughs> too. So that's good. That's good. That's what we want. We want people. To I can't people. believe that guy's not talking so much. God, yeah, he just. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> just because Jack talks a lot too. That's why. <laughs> See, you know, actually, this right here is a very good example of uh, investigation technique. Us talking amongst each other and the spirits actually joining in on the conversation. Yes. Exactly. Yes. This is a great representation of that. So, guys. Yeah, yeah there it is. See, people, you're, you're talking about yourself by listening to us. There you go. They are doing that out there. All right. I'll see you guys all later. Uh, you guys will still be on and have fun. Answer, ask your questions, Carly. Okay. I'll see you all later. And George and Kara, we will definitely have you guys back on again. You know what, Jack? I'm actually going to switch yeah. positions with you, so I'm in there. Okay. So, so I will log off, and I will be right. Jack well, Hannah for, like, I will a little bit. Hide your thing here. All right, so Keep Carly's going to come back. She's going to come over here and hang out until she gets in here. Huh? Oh, What's that? She wasn't real. She's gone. I knew it. She's, I knew it. Well, she's an apparition. Oh, oh my she's God. An apparition. Oh, oh my she's, God. About God. To, she's about to switch places. Yeah. I know. So I know. I'm going to hand it over to the apparition, and I'll catch you <laughs> on Thanks, Thanks for coming on the show. We'll have you on bye, again. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye, buddy. So you know what to do. Yes. I'm gonna switch away from the TV room. Wow. So guys. You guys are so cool. I love talking with you. Uh, just can you hear our fan? Can you hear our fan? fan we turned on the fan because okay. our dogs are like we have to give them a walk in about twenty minutes. We gotta get them out there. Are they gonna yeah. kick them? What's that? Yeah, no problem. I'll be quick. No, we like you better. Don't tell me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love that. He's a good, you know, he's a really good, he's just a great guy, man, period. I meant what I said. Oh, oh he totally is. He's awesome. Yeah. He's, he's really funny, too. I got to tell you, during April Fool's, though, like April Fool's Day, oh, my gosh. He completely forgot it was April Fool's Day, but I didn't. I prepared for that day. I was so paranoid the right. whole entire day that him not doing anything actually turned into a huge April Fool's Day joke because I was scaring myself, <laughs> like, peeking around each doorway, like, what right. Is he, what is he gonna do? I need to know his exact position. Like, what is he planning? All right. Like, I I was peeking out into the. He was working in this office here, and our bedroom's like right back there. I was peeking into the bedroom. I heard him like cough in here, and it scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> I'm so paranoid. It was awesome. But that's the kind of guy he is. He's a jokester. He's super cool. And then and that's what keeps him. I mean, I get the joking thing. That's what we do. But that's what keeps him fun. I'd rather be on my toes with somebody and not that door. Oh my God. Where did it go? I just saw that door go by itself. Aww. Oh, truth was, I, I forgot it was April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, joke on me. Uh, who's that? But this is Chino. He's Jack's, he's Jack's cat. That's well, awesome. I've adopted him as my own. He's so oh, cute. <laughs> that little white <laughs> Hi. Um, oh my I mess around with him. You know, you know, oh. Now you're always you're always happy. You're always the same person every time we see you. And I say we because we get to watch you when we find the time because we're always busy. But you know when we do see you, you're always the same person, and that's good. That's a compliment. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, I it makes me. I try to be as happy as possible. What's that? I try to be as happy as possible, especially in like today's world because uh, there's not much. There's not, and so, I appreciate you. What you gave us this opportunity tonight was just, you know, just to chit chat and slow down. This is one of the reasons why, again, that this whole virus thing, just to be able to just to sit down and just take a time out for 90 minutes or 60 minutes or 30 minutes is something we all need. I mean, this is nice, this is nice, you know, very nice. The dogs don't like it. They don't know <laughs> They're probably like, what are you doing? Well, not for you guys, because you guys are still working, but the cats here, I feel like, why are you guys going back to work? Like, come on. Right. So what enough. You, like, yeah. I want to be left alone. Yeah. This was nice for like the first three days, but like, come on, people. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. If it's okay. Yeah. Your last fine. show, you were talking about paranormal investigating, and I correct me if I'm wrong, that maybe I'm wrong, but you're saying that you're getting more deeper into the paranormal field, or, or you're Doing, you were talking about something on your last show that you're doing more in the paranormal. Is that 
Was I reading it wrong or did I hear it wrong? Um, well, recently I've been doing more for the spiritual side of the paranormal. That, okay, fair. Yes. Okay. So um, I've been working with Father Ed, who's also watching on this show. Gotcha. Um, so Sunday, this is really funny. So Sunday, we have a, a prayer group where we get together for like literally two hours and just pray for right. people. And we learn how to pray properly according to, since we're Christian, according right. to that faith. And we're, you know, talking to each other about how our blessings and our prayers were answered. And, you know, pretty much just, we're not bragging, but we're bragging about God. Pretty right. much. So we're, then Monday, we have every other Monday, we have this meeting where it's kind of like a hangout, get together, you know, we invite new people over, get to know them, you know, get the um, informal stuff out of the way. And then, which is just as awesome because we can talk about all our experiences too and how we, like our testimonies and stuff. Right. And then um, Tuesday, we have our live show tonight. And then Wednesday, there's nothing. Thursday, Father Ed has his live show uh, at 7 o'clock. Uh, um, it's like Bible lessons, like a live bi Bible study group. And Friday, we have a Skype group that goes much deeper into that. So it's the deeper lesson following Thursday's plan. Right. Um, so I've been getting very much into learning more about my faith and where I stand with my faith and learning. Um, I've actually had a re a, a reset and a reamp of my abilities. So um, they and they do coincide along with the Bible and everything. So I've been learning more about that and learning how to hone them and, you know, really work them out to the, their best potential. And, you know, I, I will say, like, this is, like, I'm in my prime. This is, like, the most positive moment of my life that I've ever been in. And I and it's going to stay that way right. you know, for the rest of my life. So I'm so thankful to have people like that. Right. And to, you know, it's really turning this quarantine mm -hmm. into the best thing possible. Right. Well, there's a reason why it's in this quarantine. There's many, there's a million reasons why this had to happen. It mm -hmm. had to happen. And for, if it's, uh, two million people are going to be different. That means that's why it was supposed to happen. Like yourself, you're changing. Well, I'm, uh, the virus is, this virus is making you a better, I don't want to say a better person, but a, a better person. I don't know if that makes absolutely. any sense. Absolutely. No, totally. You know, okay. I, absolutely. So there's, there's 40 billion reasons why this virus is a good thing. Because it's going to change 40 billion people. If it means they don't work so much, they go home to their family, they tell their wife or, or whomever that I love you or I'll see you later after work. I'm not going to work overtime today. I'm going to be home for dinner at 5 o'clock, whatever it may be. But it's going to change. It's changed me. It's changed her. It changes Absolutely. you for the better if you want to be better. If mm -hmm. you don't want to be better, then, then that's your choice. But it's choose, it, this has made us more, well, we 30 years of marriage, we already have respect and love for each other. But we just bought this home three years ago. And we've been moving. Uh, we've been working and working and working and working and work, working. But now we said, God, we've been home on weekends and redoing the house for our, own, for our own more love for the home, let's say. But we've learned to use this virus in a positive way. And that is to spend more time together, you know, mm -hmm. or just doing this or slowing down. So mm -hmm. everything's not negative and not, not everything is more so dark and demon like. It, it, there's some beauty to it. And this is a, sad to say, but a lot of families are going to be a lot better after this virus. And, you know, hopefully the kids will put away their phones and they'll play board games, stuff that we used to do when we were children. So there's a lot of love, I think, that families have been missing. And this virus has actually re rebirthed the love, yes. if I may, if I can put that way. Yeah, it's a lot of healing and in more ways than one. You know, I think it has a lot of, you know, factors put into it. One being the earth needed to heal. Within a week, we were seeing differences with the ozone layers. You know, dolphins reappeared back in Italy into the rivers there. And, you know, like the earth is healing on its own and without humans. Exactly. You know, we're, we were the disease. So in a way, it's showing us that we were the disease to the earth. Right. And that we need to take a step back and take a break from, you know, being the disease that we are to allow it to heal so that we can learn from our mistakes and better ourselves from them. Absolutely. But also in another sense, people are like, this is a plague that God sent against us and blah, blah, blah. Like, this is the end of the world and this is, the this is it. It's, it's the opposite. opposite. This yeah. is where you really sit down and you tune into your faith 
and you spend time within yourself to strengthen that connection because you can't do that in the mundane world. Right, yeah. right. Well, you like, know, being, there, being, being a paranormal investigator, we both are equally, you, you have to believe in God. You have to because God has everything to do with everything. And I try not to talk about, you know, I'm Catholic, right? And But there is one God, one God only. And I think that this earth, we were all screwing it up. I'm just going to be bottom line. We were screwing up this planet so bad that we weren't doing anything about it. All we were doing is building more and doing more to the earth and destroying her. So I think God took it in his own, in his own power and said, this is it. I have to do this. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I need to, re this world, you're destroying it. And I need to take it over again. And mm -hmm. God's way, in his way, no, all the way, he has reset all of us and reset this earth. And if we screw it up again, then we got a problem. But like you said, Terry, yeah, gonna turn the play. yeah <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's like LA, Los Angeles. What for many, many years they've had an issue with smog and you can't see the buildings from more than a mile away. And now you can see that. Kara mm -hmm. brought to my attention just the other day, we're driving, she's wow, the, the sky is so blue. Well, because, and she's a smart lady. This is a smart, this is my go to smart lady. And I'll tell you, you know, it's because more people are at home than driving. And mm -hmm. they, everything is a lot clearer. And that you're going to see a better, this earth is going to be a lot better, you know, mm -hmm. a lot better. And I, I do believe we owe it to God. And, and not think of the virus as it being so bad. It's actually what we needed to do or he needed to do to save this planet, period. Absolutely. I agree. I think, and we're going to see a lot more changes for the positive, like innovatively for technology and medicine and stuff, because we've started telemedicine. Yep. I mean, I work in a surgery center, so yep. I know how important it is to really now, in these cases, filter out the types of patients that you're having from elective to emergency surgery. So right. now people are really going to take a step back and go, do I really need to go in or can I talk to a doctor online? So that's right. going to reduce uh, pollution with right. cars and stuff. And people can maybe work from home in their uh -huh. offices. And you nailed it. You care about that up to the day. Is you're going to see this, this situation we've been dealing with for maybe uh, 45 days, 60 days. A lot of people working from home. Well, why don't they just keep working from home? It'll save the planet a lot. It'll save the planet. And traffic will be a lot better. And people will be, I, I'm big on family. So you'll be able to spend more time with your family, you know, and, and such. So, you know, just something you just said about the dolphin. I mean, that was a gift from God. You were able to see something that's so beautiful because they haven't seen it in many years because the water was so cloudy and destroyed with, with pollution and, 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 and crap. Exactly. Crap. And now we can see something that's so beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. so, there was a video out that I thought was the most amazing thing in the world. And it was literally, because I'm a huge gamer. It was wow. literally something straight out of a video game. Wow. And these people were videoing some dolphins swimming in the ocean, but they were f swimming through the bioluminescent shrimp and or the, the, the plankton that were there. That. And it looked... It was beautiful. And they were saying, like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because of all the pollution in the water. It normally doesn't last for that long. It lasts for, like, maybe a couple hours. But this was, like, days, wow. you know, of just seeing that. And, you know, it can be like that. This wow. is that it can be like that. And it can stay like that. I mean, we can beat the impossible. We've, we're, we're fighting it right now. Like, there, this is showing that there are possibilities out there. And, but you know what? The world is filled with a lot of selfish people. It is. And, and I hate the light that. always overcomes the darkness. Oh, it always no. It always does. Always. Always. Hundred percent. You know. But there's a lot of selfish people out there, and you know, I'm hoping that they, you know, I, I hope you know, it can almost bring, it will bring a tear to my eye because you know what? I'm 50, Oh God, I'm going to give up my age. I'm 54 years old, and I want to enjoy this planet as beautiful as it is today for the rest of my days on this planet. And if it's another 30 years or whatever it may be, so be it. But I want it, I, it, it it's beautiful. It, it's a beautiful planet. And mm -hmm. it's a gift that we've all have been given by God. So let's enjoy it. So let's enjoy it, not destroy it. Oh, wow. Hold on, I gotta write, I gotta write that down. Let's not destroy it. <laughs> no, you said let's enjoy it. Let's not enjoy it, not destroy it. Not destroy it. What's my next t-shirt? <laughs> George, 2020. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you need that on a t-shirt now uh, right <laughs> right that would be awesome <laughs> oh. so you know and this is for the better and you know i've turned off facebook and people are like 
probably spamming me going like, hey, what are you doing? Ah, like to see all these message notifications. I'm like, I can't even touch Facebook right now because all I see is that negativity and the complaining and the selfishness. It's, yeah. it, it, it's sad. You know, I, I, when it came, I know I, we talk about paranormal lives. Like it's our world. It really is. Paranormal is our, it's, it's a beautiful, I hate to use the word hobby, but it's a beautiful thing to do. Okay. We enjoy it. But Facebook, and she's taught me this one. Facebook and paranormal do not mix. No. It, it, it just doesn't mix. Paranormal should have its own thing. Facebook should have its own thing because Facebook is, again, a lot of evil there. A lot of evil. And it just it doesn't mix with the paranormal. But that's the only way you can get out there to if you want to show your stuff or meet people. people. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the networking there. Okay. Everybody's on Facebook and stuff. And, yeah. and yeah. everybody, yeah, there's more good than bad. Yeah. And everybody that's bad, they're actually really good. They're just, mm -hmm. they're just upset and they're, they're just, I don't even know, I don't want to say jealousy, but there's, you know, they, they've had a tough time in life and maybe a lot of their wishes haven't came true. And so they get upset easier. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It doesn't mean I'm no, right or right. It's fine. I mean, the good thing about Facebook is that you can filter who you see and who you don't. Oh, so. I filter all day long. I, I like to do the Facebook day. purge, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Go through and get rid of the negativity because no one deserves that negativity in their life. Absolutely not. not it's too toxic. And I've even had to push out family members. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's that has to be the hardest thing. That in itself is a huge grieving process. It's it's probably worse than actually losing a loved one to right. death. But you know, you need that sometimes because negativity is so toxic that right. it really hurts you on the inside. Well, it, you know, have you noticed that, you know, and I'm sure Carol will say, she never gets a word in, but it, yeah. it, when it comes to, when it comes to negative, but like the, the people out there on Facebook, negativity and stuff, I get sucked in. There was a time in my day, a year or two ago, I would become just as evil because I'd be attacking them because they're attacking me. So one day I said to myself, I don't know how long, my, I said, self, <laughs> you need to stop and just let people vent and just, all you do is delete and block. Delete and block. And I'm a better person now because all I do, they get one strike. There's three strikes in baseball. They get one strike on Facebook. If you, if you mess up, I'm sorry. Take care. Delete and block. You know, there's no need to be evil or mean or, or just, uh, I even get upset if they get mad at me if they care or any of my friends. If they say anything negative, delete and block. I just don't have time for mean people. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. No, you don't. And you shouldn't. No one yeah. should make time. No one should make time for mean people either. Exactly. Mean people. You know? I think it takes more energy to be mean than it does to be nice, which I think is yeah. interesting. Yeah, sure. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely. And it like it hurts. It literally hurts yourself. Not just other people. I mean, right. words are just words. And you know, the there's just words. You're only hurting yourself by doing that. You're Negativity feeds negativity, and hate feeds hate, feeds hate. And you know, you're just—it's festering inside of you. It's like that needs to heal. Well, you can yeah. you can go to bed at night and put your head on your pillow, knowing that you are so kind to everybody you met today. You're going to get a good night's sleep. That's how we look at it. We'll go to bed at night. Rich, man, I have insomnia like you wouldn't believe. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> my my sleep schedule is so out of whack right now. I I took a nap for like three hours, and I woke up 30 minutes before the show because I had been up for 24 hours. Oh gosh. <laughs> my sleep schedule is so out of whack. It's unbelievable. But right. that's because I don't have a work schedule. So right. my only work schedule is my prayer groups. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, wow. But I wish it worked that way. Yeah. Well, you know. So one question I do have for you guys and um especially for Kara, is what advice do you have for up-and-coming new investigators just getting into the field? Um, there's a lot going on right now. Yeah. So, number one, don't spend a whole lot of money on equipment. Um, the best equipment, I feel, is yourself, an EDT recorder, and a camera. That's really all you need. And don't Based the TV shows on what an investigation is. Um, you know, maybe get involved, find a local 
uh, team and maybe go on some investigations with them and kind of see how it really is. Um, and never investigate alone. Um, because, you know, a lot, anything can happen, especially if you go into an, you know, an abandoned building you've never been to before in, in the dark and, you know, you get hurt. Um, if you're by yourself, then you know, you're in trouble. And also, you can investigate during the day. It doesn't have to be at nighttime. There's mm-hmm. no sleep. We've gotten some of our best, um, you know, interaction with spirits during the day. So, um, I, I mean, that's my advice. But, yeah. What about you? That's it. You, know, it's, 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 you, you nailed it. You hit it right on the head. I mean, you know, when so the new, let's say somebody came, came up to me right now and said, hey, I want to be an investigator. What should I do? Find yourself a couple of local teams. Go see what they're doing. See if you really like it. Um, just just find out before you spend a dollar. Go out there and just go out there. Because if it's a, we don't do cemeteries. We do them to recharge because we respect the, the, the dead. If I, I hate the word dead, but we go to cemeteries, cemeteries to recharge, not to investigate. At least, yeah. yeah. I want to make sure because I don't want to look like a liar. But we've done the cemeteries. But when it comes to just new, new people... Um, you know, just go. Go find yourself a local team. Don't, you know, don't, don't, if you watch a TV show, don't go out and buy a black shirt, black hat, and figure you're a paranormal investigator. It all starts with your heart. If you're supposed to do it, then you do it. But and be respectful always. It's huge. You know, don't, don't think, you know, that's, I mean, there's a lot of people, we, you know, when we first started, you know, it was new to us. I was, I was guilty of watching TV shows thinking, I'm going to be just like that. You know, and I love Zach, you know, but, you know, and, and I don't mean to, I'm not picking on him, but it's just a matter of, I, that's how you're supposed to investigate. Well, everybody, how they investigate is the right way. Don't try to be like anybody else, just be yourself. But the main word that she just used is just respect and go into it with love. Love and respect will get you a lot further than the paranormal and you'll enjoy it a lot better. Absolutely. Absolutely. More. Yeah, absolutely. Love and respect. <laughs> I do have to emphasize safety because even Jack and I have had some close encounters and not even at the investigation sites. We went to a truck stop and on the way back from an investigation and I did not bring, we always have two sets of car keys, one for me and one for Jack. I was stupid. I left it in the car. Okay. So Jack took the other one. He went to the bathroom. I just wanted to walk around, you know, kind of get some fresh air, stretch my legs. And I was up near the rest area and near the bathrooms, and this man came up to me, and he said, it's, uh, it's nice out here, isn't it? I'm like, and you get creepy vibes off of them, and nobody should ever, it was like a middle-aged man approaching me, and I'm like, oh, uh-oh. Right. Um, so I put my back up against the wall to make sure I didn't have my back turned to anybody. Right. And I said, yeah, and he goes, it's really loud here, isn't it? I knew what he was implying. Like, and then, no, we were at a truck stop. Like, he oh, yeah. was saying that he could totally take me away. Oh. And nobody would be able to hear me. Oh, wow. Nobody would be able to notice because it was so busy. Right. And thank God, this woman had just come out of the bathroom. She was waiting for her husband. Right. She looked at me, looked at, got in between us, looked at him, gave him a nasty glare. And, and stayed near me for the rest of the time. He walked away, but wow. I didn't know where he went. There was a police station right next door. Can you imagine? Wow. That's a huge hit. Right, Say, right. Oh, you got cops right there, but I'm still able to nab you. Right. And so, and this wasn't my first time knowing that someone was like doing that. So I knew something was up. And so the guy came out, this husband came out to this lady and she looked at him. She goes, can we stay for a little bit? Because I want to stay with her until her friend comes out. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. She didn't say anything to me, but she I could tell she was looking at me, pointing at me. So right. and when the husband was like pulling on her, like, we gotta go, she went up to a family with kids and pointed at me and said, pretty much I think explained what happened and they stayed next to me. They didn't talk to me, but they stayed next to me until Jack came out. There's but there. you know, anywhere. It can be anywhere. You have to be careful. Never investigate on your own. Don't go on trips on your own. There's some nasty people out there. That will do some nasty things. You know, it, it's just, and you need to stay smart. Yeah. So, you got to go with your gut. I 
mean, when it you gets, and I'm sorry if that happened to you, but that could have been a very red flags go off. You need to trust them and you need to make some smart decisions because, yeah. you know, yeah. don't pay attention. Don't stay on your phone. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You need one thing that my dad taught me was always find a family with kids, a mother with children, oh, wow. because they will help you. Wow. You trust true. them because that's the motherly instinct. It doesn't matter how old you are. You right. always go up to a mother and kids. Right. And I'm sorry that happened to you. It, hey, you it's know, a experience. That's some scary stuff. But you know, I had, I had a conversation with somebody, what you're saying about the mother, the mother thing, what you just said about the children. It's like paranormal. I think females like yourself and Kara, of course, will get better evidence at a location with children around. Because I think children are always going to be drawn to the mother. If, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's just my, a little bit of an opinion. But one of my, you know, my question was to somebody just last night is they're investigator, women investigators, and they, you get a lot of evidence, and they do when it comes to children because the children are drawn to the females or the mothers or whatever it may be. So it just kind of came around what you just said about you going to a family, you know, to feel yeah. safe. Yeah. Wow. So guys, if you're ever in that situation and you don't know what to do, look around. If there's a mother with kids or even a father with kids. Right. Well, no. Well, <laughs> mostly a mother with kids. Um, yeah. Please just give them a little hint. Say, hey, I'm really yeah. uncomfortable. Right now. Someone approached me. Can you please right. stay? Oh, they will. You know, awesome. humans are humans. So thank you for pointing out safety because that is a huge, huge thing. Awesome. You know, that's okay. I know everything, everything goes in my mouth is paranormal, but I do believe when they have, you know, the people that go on investigations, they find new teams. I do believe they need to start something in the paranormal. And what it is, they should do background checks on everybody. You know, background checks, because you, mainly it could be anybody, male or female, but mainly for, for young ladies. Because you go to a dark building and you don't know any of these people and you don't know anything where, they, where they've been for 20 years if they could have been locked up. Nothing that they're bad. But I do believe when it comes to paranormal teams, and you get people, you go to an investigation, I think everybody should have a background check. Everybody. Because you don't know who people are these days. You yeah. know, you find out later on when something happens, you know? Yeah. Just my yeah, opinion. That's, that's important, yeah. And and for our team, we, we don't let anybody on our team except for close family. Right. You know, we like to keep it close-knit and small, and we know everybody, and we know their past, and we know who they are, and, you know. You have to. It's, you have to. You really do. So, yeah. but yes. So, anyway, we're not getting any other questions that I can see um, okay. that are popping up here. All so, right. I th I'm going to let you guys go walk your dog because he's probably stayed in here like, please. Right here. She's right here to my left. No problem. Well, thank you again. I mean, I mean you are an amazing young lady. I'm very proud oh, of thank you. Thank you. I, I'm very proud of you. And, and, and I know it sounds really weird, but. Um, you're not at a truck stop, but I'm very, <laughs> no, <yes. laughs> well, really, I'm really proud of both of you, but I'm really proud of you. Uh, it, uh, you guys are doing a great thing. Like I said earlier, you guys are doing a great thing and, and thank you for the opportunity tonight, you know, for hanging out for sure. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. And you, you know, we, I'm still new to the field and I love learning from, you know, skill sets from you guys, too, and your opinions and, you know, how you guys investigate and your experiences, because it, yeah. it adds to mine. So, because right. um, there's so many other experiences out there that you can experience. Well, we're all so, students in everything. We're all, you know, we could be a teacher and a student. Like, right now, I'm a student, and you're the teacher. And then I could be a teacher, and you'd be the student. We all take stuff from each other, and that yeah. makes us a better person. It really Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a great night. See you later. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank All right, you. guys. Thank Bye. you for watching. We will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nick. That's awesome. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you next Tuesday. Mwah.